Hello, my dears. <laughs> I love you. I love you. How are you doing today? I may have, I know I have. I've spoken before about how <laughs> the inner guidance more and more is um, moving me toward just telling me when to turn on the camera <laughs> and that what needs to come forth will come forth. So this is, it's been an interesting journey with, with my inner guidance and with staying really connected. So uh, this will be just as much of a surprise to you as it is to me or the other way around <laughs> to me as it is to you. Um, mm, mm, mm. You feel that? In this current world where there are so many quick cuts, so much information, so many things pulling your attention, big hugs and vibes and yay to those of you who are on this little journey with me to see where these videos go. Those of you who drop in and pause and go with this pace, because I'm very intentional about my pace for the videos, I always have been. I like analog. Hmm. And I, when I placed my hand here to, to check in and give that support, um, I got to feel this beautiful pendant and, uh, this is, I found this jeweler, um, actually on Amazon, but she's on Etsy as well. It's, she called, her business is called Rocks to Rings and this is Moldavite, um, which is a really, really powerful stone that comes, and this is a Herkimer diamond. This, this comes from asteroid and, um, when you put this on, you feel that energy. <laughs> it is so real. It's like um, the the positive version of of a Horcrux in terms of like you feel that. It's very real. Um, if you know if you're not prepared, you might not sleep. Um, <laughs> but, but I feel stones, you know call to me or call to people when when it's something that you need to carry or to work with to to be an ally um that's how I like to do it anyway is just ask and listen and pay attention to the beings I'm in allyship with so these two it was a really beautiful story too I had purchased a different necklace from this jeweler and then we were in communication um because that one on day one left and needed to be somewhere else and because of that it started this communication with this amazing artist um sandy is her name and so she over communication you know i was going to uh vietnam and felt that there were some stone allies that wanted to come and and do some healing work there and she was like i know the one for you <laughs> So she's also on Etsy. If if you feel called, I just love to share. Um, yeah, but those times when we get to be interdependent are so special, and that's what this is. That's what we're creating together, my dears. Those of you who are here with me, and to those who who write messages in the comments. Uh, thank you. I do read them. I have, there's an app now where I can just see all the message, all the comments from all the different videos. It used to be really just impossible to track. And, um, now I can go in and I can see what's current. So it might take me a couple days or sometimes a couple weeks to respond, but I do read them. So thank you. Thank you for taking that time to reflect back what you're receiving and um, share what you feel called to share in your life because then this gets to be this co-creation 
which is why I really love YouTube. It's that's my <laughs> that's my jam. Um, you know, I've had times where I've really enjoyed the other platforms as well, and I may again, I may yet, Mr. Frodo, but uh, this is where I feel called to be because it's so rich and so juicy. So thank you. And I send you vibes every day. I really do. Yeah. So, mm, what feels called to be shared? Mm -hmm. Maybe you're feeling, um, in case you don't track the spaceweather.com and the solar flares we've been having, um, just like astrology, you don't need to track it. There's no need. You don't need to track the weather. But it's interesting when you do, or at least in my experience, when I do pay attention to those and I can go, oh, well, no wonder I was feeling incredibly frazzled and my husband and I together just needed to kind of ground, or no wonder I just felt like eating a bunch of food that night, or I was just feeling like something, uh, because sometimes we're having these intense solar flares which is a lot of energy it's not bad it's just a lot and and you know i in my experience and uh in what others i follow are experiencing and intuiting and tracking is that this is helping us build the neurology to be able to hand handle more volume of of energy and not short circuit so to stay grounded and connected and clear through that. Uh, and we're also building the neurology to, to be able to you know, work with that in really productive and, and creative and life-giving ways and not just numb out or fry out or act out. So if you're feeling those times, you know, if you're feeling some times where you're like, ah, <laughs> we mustn't panic, we mustn't panic, ah! You know, if you've seen Chicken Run, one of my favorites, um, don't worry. You're not going crazy. It's very, very real. You can track it. It's science. We're contending with a lot of energy. Um, and these surges, these spikes that are coming much more frequently and, and exponentially more powerfully than in thousands of years. You know, it's a huge, huge difference. So have that compassion for yourself. Uh, yeah, and I did a video about if you're feeling anxiety or you just need grounding, you can go right there. And I have some of those tips for you. Uh, I'm going to talk about time today is what's coming through. So uh, I, I often use a, a Taurus field as a model. Uh, I think it's a very handy model to use. Um, and I'm gonna use paper. I know I have that awesome board over there, but there's something about having the natural light, and I do have a ring light here too, but having the salt lamp and the natural light and being able to bounce that to you and being able to sit here in a little tighter of a frame um, and give this energy to you feels really important today. So I'm trusting that and honoring that. And we're going to go old school with paper. <laughs> okay, so let's see if I have a pencil. I do. Okay, so I, I talked a little bit. If you saw the video last week um, when I was talking about different lives, um, this is a way, a model that helps me to understand and experience time and fields, fields of experience. So, if we look at a Taurus field, uh, maybe I should do pen so it'll come through a little clearer. It's going to be messy, but it'll, it'll be clearer than pencil, I think. Okay, so if we look at a Taurus field and we know the, that a Taurus field on the side view can look like an infinity symbol, which we're all used to. It also has, it's like if this is a black hole, it also has um, the... Uh, you know, spirals in to a black hole to a white hole, you know, so it's doing that kind of a thing. 
And then the energy is going through all in th these ways. And it also ends up, and there is uh, Nassim Haramain has uh, some really great talks on, um, about how it ends up feeling, seeming like a sphere. Just like our Earth is a, is a sort of a sphere, basically a sphere, um, but has those poles of energy, right? So we know that the North Pole and the South Pole are different, and they have those those poles of energy there, but that that the Earth itself, just like the at, at the Planck level, very very sub you know uh, tiny subatomic level, um, the smallest particles that kind of make sense for us to be monitoring right now, although we know we could always go smaller and we could always go bigger. But anyway, this is a universal model of, um, of a field. Um, so if we think about if this is uh, all of human experience, everything that could possibly be experienced by humanity, that's so it's, it's big. <laughs> so if this is that, you know, and all of us, all of the things that we're experiencing in this life fit somewhere in there. Now, if you put, um, if you think about, um, let's see, a helpful way for me to think about these things is just like if we've got the sun and you've got some energy coming through, okay, um, what we, or maybe I'll, I'll put that on top. So if you think of high vibration versus low vibration, and we've, always, we've all felt those times when we feel really high, we even use those words, or really happy, joyful, and times when we feel really low or we're grieving and so that energy is coming down, you know, grief is beautiful, um, but, or, and it can just be painful or if we're even depressed and stuck in that energy. So it can be helpful to think of it in terms of like if this is um, high or if this is a sun that's shining down, then these would be the, the hot spots, the high spots, and these would be the, the colder spots, the darker spots, you know, in sort of the shadow of that. So another way that you could look at that is like this, and then we're shading it, uh, whoops, we're shading it this way. So there's a lot of light on top, and someone else would be able to draw this so much better. Someone like my husband. Probably someone like one of or many of you watching. But bear with me, if you will. And um, so this, you know, like some sort of shading action. So we've all had those times when we're just feeling down. Or if this is all of human experience, we've got violence here. We've got all of the dark stuff that we could possibly experience. And we've got all of the bliss stuff that we could possibly experience. Now, uh, as you can tell, we're moving out of seeing everything through the lens of binaries. It's either male or female. Well, no, it was always a spectrum. It was just, and maybe you could categorize it as an interesting experiment as humanity to see things through a binary. And see what that would be like. Well, we've pretty much done it. <laughs> Moving on, you know, interesting experiment and reductive, very reductive of things being there being only one right way and, only, you know, and everything else is wrong. Well, no, there is not one truth. There is not one path. You get yours, and I, and I have mine, and they're all hopefully continually growing and continually creating of themselves. We have that option. It's an option. Now, we also have the option to keep on experiencing things through the binary and to stress ourselves out if we don't think that we're on our correct path. That's an option. You might choose it. Totally fine. Uh, one of the things I'm here to say is that it's not the only option. And you could actually, you, you know, you, you could also, there's another option, choose to see, okay, if everything in my life is existing within the sphere that is so big, we, it's hard to even imagine that there are edges to it, 
but that is within the sphere of all that could possibly be experienced as a human and as humanity. If my whole life exists within that field, then could I ever not be on the path? Is that even possible? Or am I able to experience not being on the path? Because maybe that was something that's really interesting to experience as a human. Like, okay, let me just really feel what that feels like to be living in the wrong, uh, living wrong, being wrong, or, or you know, not enough, uh, uh, sinning, off, off balance, off the path. You know, I have had all those experiences. And that's fine. The great news is you can experience that at the same time as going, wow, what a really interesting and human experience I'm having right now. Even that experience is within the realm of all the things it's possible to experience as a human. And since I'm here being human, maybe I'm contributing just as much by experiencing this as I am by experiencing anything else. Anything else. What you're experiencing right now, however you feel right now, whatever you imagine of yourself right now, of some goal that you need to fulfill or that you want to fulfill or who you're supposed to be in the world, all of that. You are already there. This moment is just as important as every other moment. It's just as divine, as perfect, as whole, as complete as every other moment in your life. It doesn't matter if no one else is there to witness it. You're there. That's your opportunity. You're in the front row seat. I'm in this seat over here. And now we're connecting our energy fields. So you have are getting a perspective of, of my experience from where you are. That's also part of what you're experiencing, part of what you, drop of consciousness, are here to add to that collective experience of humanness. Just as my connection with you, my feeling you right now, my noticing if you've thumbs up it or if you commented or if you, you know, whatever I notice of you, whether it's completely ethereal or there's something that's brought into, into more substantial form than thought, although thought is, just, is plenty substantial, it's just as substantial. My experience of that is also within that realm, it's also just as important. No, you don't have to agree with me. I'm just, I'm just bringing in other perspectives in case it's helpful. Because for me, it's, uh, it's been game changer ling. <laughs> because when we get talking about time, um, sometimes because we we experience time, a lot of us. Uh, it might not seem like a choice, but it is as linear. Um, there can be this tendency to be always looking ahead or back, right? You've heard this. So if I'm always thinking, okay, there's this big thing coming that I'm working towards. And when I get there, then it will matter. Then I will be important. Then whatever. <laughs> yeah, sure. But not more so than right now. Just like being here as a dot is not a bigger piece of that pie than being here as a dot. Now what's really cool is even if I'm experiencing this, once I remember I'm actually experiencing something within the realm of, of all that could be experienced as a human, I have access to also be conscious of everything else. 
you may have heard the adage that that a um, excitement is or fear uh, sorry anxiety is excitement minus breath I may have even shared it here I'm gonna say that again anxiety not fun is excitement fun <laughs> minus breath so if I have a lot of energy and I have nowhere to put it you know, I'm not able to use that. I'm not able to keep my breath flowing so that I f have that experience in my body of utilizing all that I have and then receiving all that I can and then utilizing all that I have even more as I continue on this one breath that I'm going to keep talking on. If I don't notice, if I don't remind myself that I can, that I have that breath to use, my scope, my awareness gets very small or very shallow. And I'm only connecting my awareness in that moment to that experience of, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. Right? That little loop. So what I just did there was I dropped my energy down into Earth, into Gaia, let my energy that fountain up whatever I don't need. I've talked about this in, in other videos. Let myself connect in then, connect my awareness to this larger sphere. We can then make so much space. If I'm connecting to the whole sphere of all the other ways that hum humans are being human right now, sometimes it can be overwhelming, but on another on another way to look at it, suddenly there is space for me to just be and do my one drop that's mine to be and do. Just do the next right thing, right? From Frozen, it wasn't invented by Frozen, as many people have, have said that adage, but I was just watching a behind the scenes making of Frozen 2. <laughs> Highly recommend. Um, yeah. So, but what I was saying is when I'm connecting in, I can bring my awareness to that larger, to, uh, to also connecting to excitement, to also connecting to bliss. <laughs> yeah. You have access to bliss right now. Right now. What even is bliss? You might be saying. Maybe you felt it. Maybe you're feeling it right now. Maybe it's always seemed like an abstract thought. I'll share what my experience of it is. Bliss to me is, is, is identical. Uh, experiencing being that center point of all that is. Now, I've only been talking about all that is as a human, but you can also connect to all that is all <laughs> right you can right now so what's really uh joyful about that experience is that with bliss in my experience i can also be grieving i can also be in pain i can also be feeling whatever is present in in the moment uh even fear i can have space for fear without constriction because i can go wow that too is divine. Fear is one experience of being human. And I can notice that and also have room for all the rest. Yeah. Yeah. So what I experience and, and I'm noticing is that part of this, that this is a huge part of this transformation that we're going through is being able to still feel all the interesting things and, you know, and sense things and taste things and explore things and build and create together and all of that. But to not lose our um, center by being, uh, by identifying only in, in these structures or this very small part of what's actually the larger experience that's happening that we have access to. So it's, it's pretty incredible 
<laughs> that and and like this miracle of construction that we as humans are able to focus and and just identify as being alone or being something small when actually we're totally a part of everything. It's amazing. When you're in that though, it can be very scary and alone and painful, right? Uh, so, and I know I've, I'm, I'm just restating this in a few times because sometimes it's hearing it a different way that makes it go. But I'm, I'm telling you now not to minimize whatever you're experiencing. Only to have an, to open up a, a window of possibility. What if you could experience that and still make space for that experience while also loving it? While also having compassion for how delicate and, and human and divine that experience is, how, how amazing it is that you can even have that experience. And I promise you it won't last forever. <laughs> and I've just said that, words are so, so tiny. So it won't last forever and it'll still be there. <laughs> Meaning, our awareness continues to move through this whole uh, experience. We continue to move through. We call that time by categorizing it. But because time is dependent on our, our, where we're placing our awareness, it can feel endless when we stay in something, and that, which is another marvel of attention. We can keep going in the same very little loop and it can feel like never ending. And then whenever we're done exploring that little loop, however long that takes, by, by linear, by calendar time, however long that takes, all the rest is still there. You haven't lost anything. You haven't lost anything. If you're feeling it's time for a change, great, you can make a new choice but it's not too late. It's never too late. Unless we want to have that experience of it being too late and that's an option. <laughs> okay? It's an option. Just know that you're choosing it. Know that you're choosing it. Whenever we make an excuse, we're choosing to live in a reality that we're constructing for ourselves where we make an excuse, but you're not stuck. You could you could walk out of whatever situation you think you're stuck in right now, you could. I'm not saying there won't, things won't happen if you make that choice. But you're not stuck. And if you need help, help is available. So please reach out if you need help. Okay? You are so loved. You are so loved. You are love. Period. So, that's another way we can ex we can think of this. We can think of the field of love. Um and I don't think I Sometimes <laughs> I I I practiced explaining something and then it never actually gets posted. So, um if I'm repeating myself, then I guess it bears repeating. But you could you could also think of the a field um, as love. I guess I talked about did I talk about relationships in that little in that one last time? Um, ooh. So I thought I'll I'll um I'll do another one that's about work. Okay, so experience of love. Um, now this could be if we. Think again about a uh, sun or positive, you know, the experience of higher vibrational things, then, um, then, you know, you can think about it that way in terms of, in terms of this model or, you know, that model, but you can also think of it in terms of, um, being inside of an experience. So, so if this, for example, is, um, 
romantic partnership. This is the field of what are the possible things that you could experience of romantic partnership. And maybe you come in and, and you're sort of, you're outside of it and you're thinking, oh, I'll just do this. So that, um, and it's like, oh man, I really wish, I, I, I'm so single right now, but I really wish uh, I could um, have a partner. And so there's that, you're kind of on the periphery and you're experiencing yourself as not being in the center of that experience of romantic partnership. You're experiencing yourself out here wishing for it. Yeah? Or you're experiencing yourself out here being like, I am so happy to be single right now. Yes, thank you. This is exactly wonderfully where I want to be. So maybe the sun is over here. Or, you know, maybe that's what you're experiencing up here is like, oh, I am in high vibrational, loving being single. And down here, you're like, no, I just really want when, when am I going to meet my person? Been at both places. Both great. Just different. Okay. Uh, so now then maybe you um, start dating or you get on an app and at least you're being clear on that app of what you're, what you're offering, what you're calling in, you know, and you're having that clarity. And so you're getting closer. You're, you're then in that process, you're kind of imagining um, what that's going to be like. You're maybe making some space in your life for, oh gosh, if I'm going to be dating, then I need to have, I need to not work every single night. <laughs> I need to make sure that I have some space there. Maybe you clear out a drawer and just, uh, uh, you know, start making space in your life and imagining what that's going to be like to, um, to go to the movies with somebody or, you know, um, and so, and partnership, I don't just mean that has to be with one person. I know there are a lot of different ways to be in partnership. So I'm like, this is the field of all the ways there are to be in romantic partnership. So, so you're filling in there a little closer and then you start kind of dating. And this one, you know, you go, oh, well, I like those things about it. I like those qualities, but I'm not so into those other qualities. So let's see what else is around there. And you're just kind of going around or, you know, going around and spiraling in, spiraling in. And you might have time that now, at, just like any field, just like a planet, the closer you get in to that center, what happens to the pressure? The pressure builds, right? So out here, no pressure, none. I'm just happy and single, no pressure. I see that over there, all that romantic stuff over there, good for you. Or no, why me? I'm so alone. Still no pressure because you don't have to actually feel what it's like to be in relationship, which is a totally different thing than imagining it, right? So the more you're in there in the arena with somebody or somebody's and you're experiencing what that's like to be like, to have all your stuff come up, <laughs> right? And to go, oh, wow, I really reacted to that thing. Let me look at what, what wound was just triggered by this person and why that was such a huge reaction for me. Or maybe you're just projecting all on the other person and they're always doing this and they're always doing that. Whatever that is, you know, they're always doing that. That's gonna be more in this arena. Wow, what an amazing experience that, that this person just did this little thing that seems like nothing, but my God, it's just bringing up all this old pain from my childhood. So grateful for this relationship so that I can heal that. That's going to be up in here. That's a really wonderful experience. And it can be like that. Same exact circumstances. You get to choose where you want that, that experience to be on that spectrum. Uh, so like black hole, white hole, right? Energy rising up. Ugh, why poor me? Everything's coming down and why me? And oh, you did this to me and it's all about me. That's all going to live down in here. <laughs> but like, wow, what an incredible opportunity I have to heal from this, this pain or this pattern that's harmful. And I didn't even know, but this person is holding up a mirror for me so that I can see, wow, that's going to be up in here. Now, something happens when you're at the center of an experience like that. And this is speaking from experience because, oh my God, my relationship is amazing. I love my husband. Oh, oh my God, how can I even, I, I could just do videos forever. 
on how amazing our relationship is. And that is lived. You can feel it in my body. There is so, oh my God, there's so much gratitude. Because we both go in. We both have a tons of fun. <laughs> but we both are feeling these solar flares. And sometimes we get crunchy with each other. We both had times of getting to know each other and getting to know like different calibrations for communication and different wounds and all that stuff. And the whole time we've made space and gone, okay, whatever we thought was going to happen tonight, whatever we thought was, this is what's actually happening. So we both would make space and we make space for when something gets crunchy or when something's coming up for somebody and we're there together and we talk it through and we feel it through and there might be emotions happening. We might need to pause and have some space, whatever it is. But usually that whole layer gets done, in, I mean, in maximum a few hours. It used to be several. Uh, and, and we've, you know, we've gone through a lot of different stuff and just get deeper and deeper in there. Um, and times when you question, especially in the beginning, you know, you're just really getting used to each other. So you might come in for a little while and then, sh you know, shoot back out and then go into another layer, a deeper layer, come in for a little while and then sh shoot, you know, sorry, this way, shoot back out and then go like, what was I even thinking? And then you come back around and you feel yourself being pulled back into that time. And so, you know, you can also think of it as like an orbit. I have a song called Binary Stars where two completely whole and complete, uh, completely whole and complete, but yeah, celestial bodies are orbiting around a common center. So you can think of it like that. You go out this way, they go out this way, and then but when you come into that center, it's so, so beautiful. And each time you go through, just like, just like a, a star, this is science, each time you go through, you're, you're, um, you're alchemizing a more dense, uh, you're able to alchemize more dense material, which then gets transformed or jettisoned. And then you rarefy, you purify what you're bringing into the next round. So you get deeper and deeper when you choose to stay in it and not get stuck somewhere and just kind of like coast. You get deeper and deeper to where that uh, it's, it becomes not really withstanding the pressure, just uh, able to let that flow go through you to a much higher and more powerful degree uh, and tr tr to trust the cycle. That there'll be cycles when you get to be together, there'll be cycles where one needs to go travel or one's over here going on this journey. But what, what my husband and I do every day and multiple times throughout the day whenever possible is we're continually alchemizing what comes through. We're, we're discussing it, we're talking it through, we're sharing, we're understanding enough about each other, you know, as much as possible about each other's fields and what each other are going through so that we can really champion each other and hold up mirrors and say, hey, I think you're being hard on yourself here, uh, you know, or have you thought about it this way? Or, wow, that's incredible that you can do that. Do you know what you're just doing here? Don't rush past that moment. That's an incredible moment. Let's celebrate that moment. So because we do that together, it's, it's really, um, we create that safe cauldron of alchemy together where we can rarefy the next materials and get it, you know, pure and pure and pure. And it's just like flipping awesome, you know? And even if it's crunchy, we'll realize it and be like, honey, I'm so sorry. Let's just, wow, there was an X-class solar flare there. We were both handling a lot of energy or, you know, I'm so sorry, I'm tired. And uh, I should have said, hey, can you talk? Can I really want to be there to hear you? And I don't have that capacity right now. But I really, really want to hear it. Can we can we make a time later, and and then we'll circle back and we'll make that time. You know, just having that communication so that we can keep keep being that for each other, and so we can hold that space or holding that space for each other's alone process. Like, hey, this doesn't happen all that often, but it does happen sometimes where it's like 
one of us has something to share and the other person just like really needs a moment because they had a intense day and we go yeah that's cool i'll go over here i'll journal or i'll uh you know go out and do something or i'll do whatever i need to do over here and when it's time and we're both in that place then we'll get together for that you know so um god i could go on this is already long uh, so I'll just say, and I may end up doing another video on this, but but because it's coming, I'll, I'll just say. Same model can be really helpful as a way to think about um, a, a job or a career. That, uh, like, if you take um, sports, okay, most people are going to be out here as spectators or as, like, me, <laughs> aware that sports exists. Every once in a while, I'll go to a live match, which is really fun live, but mostly I'm not, I'm just like in a whole other realm of arts. Um, yeah, so most people are gonna be somewhere outside of that field uh, or in the spectator. You'll have way more people spectating than you will um, doing like Pee Wee League or doing minor league, you know? The more, when you start young and you get used to having that pressure of eyes on you and coach and parents and all that stuff, and then you go the next level in and you be able to handle higher pressure. You go the next level in and you're like, okay, I'm playing college ball. I've got tons of eyes on me. I've got all this pressure. I need to keep my scholarship. I need all that stuff. And I'm able to, because I've been through all these other rounds, I'm able to handle that pressure. And it's just making me sharper. So a lot of people are gonna bounce out at all those different layers that they had, they had, they got what they needed, and they're moving on and they're over, you know, cycling into some other fields. Or they might still stay spectators, but they're like, you know what, that was great, gave me some confidence when I was a kid, I'm gonna come over here and do this other thing. You know, um, so at every level, you'll have people that, that bounce out, just like LA. <laughs> Most people don't make it past that two year mark. Um, and I don't, and I don't mean, I'm gonna pause. I don't mean don't make it. I really mean what I said before about you get what you need. When you're done getting what you need, move on. Trust that. There's somewhere else that you are meant to be. It's re it, but if you're like, oh yeah, I gotta just keep cycling in there, no matter what, like the more pressure, I just, I just gotta keep getting in there and getting tighter. And yeah, I just, I'm just gonna up my game with this. I'm gonna get these different coaches. And I'm speaking like, I would have done this for acting, but I feel like sports is a little easier for people to understand what goes into it. Same thing goes into any field, okay? Acting is flipping hard. It's very hard. Any kind of creation process is very hard. Uh, and the pressure that you have and the misunderstandings that you have and the people who are like, Oh, anyone can do that. It's just whatever. Like there's a lot you're contending with. And so it's, it's very few people who keep going in and in and in. And then you get to that place where, uh, and because it's a cycle, this happens in moments, right? It happens in moments where you get to that center point in any field, any field. And you're in what, what people, some people call the zone. And it, everything is just you're in you're in the singularity where that's your one focus and at the same time you're aware of in a different way the whole field because anytime we're in a singularity we're also connecting to that whole field so meditation same thing lots of thoughts lots of thoughts fewer thoughts able to focus more and more and more having those singularity moments that then shoot you out and you're like, yeah, I'm doing it. Oh, damn. <laughs> right? But you get more and more able to drop into that alignment where you're feeling that singularity. You're creating from that trust of, okay, I just need to turn this on. I just need to get my pen, get my butt in that chair, and creation will know what to create through me. So... It's a helpful model because the more, in my experience, the more I can pay attention to, oh, I think that I'm stuck here, but I'm just in this moment. Do I want to stay there? No. What's holding me back? Oh, this belief system or this one belief that I'm not good enough or that I need this before I can do that or something. Um, 
then I can work that little, whatever that little boulder, that little obstacles in the way of my flow, keep going, get back to that singularity point, remind myself what this is and why I'm here, build that ability to be the lightning rod. Yeah, and when you're the lightning rod, there is no pressure, there's no resistance. So you don't feel that pressure. It's when you come out of that creation moment and you're looking at it that you're like, wow, <laughs> I did that, what? Okay, okay. Yeah, is that making sense? Okay, share your thoughts. I love you, I love you. Share things that are helpful for you. Share journeys you've been on because it helps everybody and I love it. Thank you so much. Here we all are together. <laughs> I love doing this one too. Woo. See that? We've got, uh, that's a Taurus field right here. In to out. Because they're also out to win. Anyway, I love you. Take care. We'll see you soon.